computers we use can be extremely large. I mean, we use the largest computers in the world for some of our simulations. One of them is Emerald, which is a GPU accelerated um, system. There were various reasons why we used Emerald. Uh, the primary one is we're interested in GPU computing, so using graphics cards to actually perform the scientific computation. And Emerald is the biggest GPU cluster in the UK. Emerald has been a key piece of infrastructure for us, in particular as a stepping stone from desktop workstations onto large international GPU accelerated HPC facilities. So without the ability to run on Emerald to show that we can scale up to hundreds of GPUs, to show that we can get performance from hundreds of GPUs, it would have been impossible to move onto these larger scale machines. We couldn't have done this on any other machine in the UK. Having this infrastructure in place was critical. We ran various tests on Emerald. And the first tests were what we would call scaling tests, where we ascertain whether we can really utilise the performance of the machine all the way up to its full extent of over 300 GPUs. We then went on to actually perform what we might call production simulations. So we've done simulations of flow over idealised spoilers. So these are sort of flaps that would stick up off the top surface of an aircraft wing. They generate very unsteady flow. The software tools that we've designed are specifically designed for simulating these unsteady flows very accurately. But obviously that requires a lot of computation and we needed um, a large chunk of emerald to actually perform those simulations, so it's very important for us. So there's potentially huge benefits of being able to digitally prototype as opposed to actually build physical prototypes. I mean, the primary benefit is significant cost savings because there's big cost implications for building even a wind tunnel model or a full-scale working version of an aircraft and then finding out something has gone wrong with that model or real aircraft. If you can perform these tests on a computer, then it's easy to adjust parameters to change shapes before you go and build the real thing. So what this allows us to do is look instantly at our results as they're generated. This can lead to a big improvements really in our workflow, generating very large amounts of data. The paradigm, if you like, of writing all of that onto a magnetic hard drive, then transferring it somewhere where you're going to visualize it, loading that up again, and then visualizing it. That takes a long time. If, when that data is generated in the fast GPU memory, you render it up on that GPU straight away and look at it, it's much quicker. This is increasingly important as we start to perform lots of unsteady flow simulations, where you don't just generate one time snapshot, one steady state flow solution. You generate data that runs through time. So you're generating huge amounts of data that you need to look at as you go along, because it would be impossible to store all of this. So um, the challenge of dealing with the big data, if you like, that we generate from these unsteady simulations is becoming more and more of an issue. We could easily generate terabytes, petabytes of, of data from a large unsteady simulation. So this is why these in situ, as I've talked about, visualization and analysis pipelines are going to become more important because they give you a route to really avoiding that big data by analyzing it as it's produced at source and filtering it so that you're only looking at the things you're interested in. It can give you a big win in that context.